Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in a short little video, hopefully it's short, uh, where we look at a little bit of content for Gene Kirkpatrick, the leader, the new leader of the United States in 1973. And what you gotta talk about how it got here and other things, but let's go, this land is her land. She did not know how many times or how many had come to the National Mall today, staring back at her in a sea of blank, unknown faces. Less than a minute ago, it was pomp and circumstance. A long ceremony, a marching band, a Bible, and a cacophony of cheers. In that minute, something had changed. The woman at the podium was now the most powerful on earth, with all the hope or dread that accompanied such a fact. Now, perhaps a million voices lay quiet, with their expectant owners wrapped in scarves and coats, anxiously awaiting the words of the new president, Jean Duane Kirkpatrick. Among the foremost duties of a government in the provision for the common defense, a guarantee against external aggression, the survival of our way of life. We must ask ourselves, is a government fulfilling such duties as evidenced by foreign troops on rifle American soil and the continued warnings from military men that our current strategy is ineffective? And my very presence on these steps, perhaps the answer is no. I have been elected and approved by the American people to head a new presidential administration. I know very well full the responsibilities placed in me by them and by God and will fulfill them to the best of my ability. The troubles faced by our nation today cannot be solved by a single man or woman. It does not require the sacrifice that so many have made in service to democracy as in the Argonne or on uh, Bougainville or on the dunes of the Namib. However, it does require the best effort of every citizen to believe in themselves and the capacity for great deeds in this endeavor. I have the utmost confidence in the people of the United States to adapt to and overcome their challenges, for we are the progeny of almost two centuries of great individuals. We are America, and with our exceptional will and the grace of God, no trial should prove too great for our strength to overcome Godspeed, Madam President, in which we have ten focuses, and that's all for uh, the Kirkpatrick presidency, but... That's a good 10 focuses. The election of the academic and former diplomat, Jean Kirkpatrick, has surprised even the most shrewd political analysis. A woman with limited political experience and a controversial background was not the top choice for one of the two major political parties. Swept into office on an NPP surge in the aftermath of the oil crisis, she now faces the task of restoring confidence in the executive office and the reputation of the U.S. abroad. This task will be a daunting one, though over the initial shock of the oil crisis, America is still in a vulnerable economic state and beset by domestic unrest. President Kirkpatrick is prepared to respond to both problems swiftly to curb the influence of radicals and restore certainty in the future of our nation. So, how did I get Gene Kirkpatrick? So, I really started out to try to get Yaki or Gus Hall, but we have Gene Kirkpatrick inaugurated as the President of the United States. She was sworn in as the President, giving a speech that received well across both the nation and the OFM. Kirkpatrick rose to prominence during the oil crisis, soaring in popularity with her hardline diplomacy towards America's enemies. She continues to advocate the Kirkpatrick Doctrine, which calls for intervention in third world countries in order to stop the spread of anti-American interests. Now, many nations in Latin America are worried that, as happened with the infamous Roosevelt Colliery, Corollary, the U.S. will once again begin breathing down their necks. Similarly, Japan and Germany are standing vigilant, unwilling to surrender their gains to an iron-willed America. Regardless of foreign reactions, Kirkpatrick is president, and she now wields both sword and scepter. Call up Langley, we've got work to do. In which, uh, okay, so, like I said earlier before I interrupted myself. So, you got to pretty much lose all your wars to get to this point. I've lost the war against the Guiana. I lost the South African war, and as you can tell, Africa looks like a wasteland or wild place to be in. So we lost the war against South Africa, or in South Africa. However, I also got entangled in Indonesia. And, let's see, I think, yeah. So Cardinal won, and we didn't do super well there. Go figure. Let's see, I also got Wallace elected. Yes, I did get Wallace elected. However, I did not get him impeached. I failed to repeal the Civil Rights Act when I passed it with Nixon. Uh, Wallace also failed to pass Medicaid. I believe. We have operational success. Very well done, gentlemen. And so after I got or failed, I, when I failed the Medicare, I also failed to repeal the Civil Rights Act, like I said, but I also passed Social Security. We got that, so that was kind of interesting. And then I screwed up as Wallace because Gold, Barry Goldwater was elected, and after I got Barry Goldwater elected, I tried to investigate the AFL-CIO and got caught which really resulted in some funky Senate. So here's the Senate. This is this is the most extreme Senate I've seen yet, and it's almost all Republicans and Democrats. 78 senators are Republicans, 18 are Democrats, one are part of the far right NPP, and one are from the Yaquis. And yet we still got Kirkpatrick elected. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. Of course, when during campaigns, I didn't campaign for anybody. I just like just chose which which either party and just kind of went with with there. And you can tell this is the ideology wheel. 
but regardless, too soft. President Jean Kirkpatrick felt the smooth surface of the Resolute Desk for what felt like the hundredth time. She was here and it was here, and that seemed an impossible extraordinary fact. A manila folder lay on the desk, and she wrapped her fingers on the smooth, varnished wood, patiently awaiting a discussion of the folder's contents. A short rap came at the door, and her new Secretary of State, Walt Rostow, marched in without invitation. Madam President, I understand you want to speak with me regarding assignments and removals in the State Department. She handed Rostow the folder, and she, he flipped through it slowly. Madam President, these are some of the most capable diplomats the State Department has, and you want me to sideline or fire them? Men like Jack Vaughn are too soft. I beg your pardon, surely you can't be serious. Mr. Rostow, I am not in the habit of making jokes on affairs of state. These individuals need to be replaced. I have a list of suitable candidates for each position. The details may determine at your discretion. I'd rather not remove so many, especially not the ones who are so capable. Mr. Secretary, in the coming weeks, you will either remove these individuals or join their number. You may fall in line or step aside, but you will not stand in my way. Rostow grimaced slightly but nodded and left the Oval Office without a word. President Kirkpatrick returned to feeling the smooth varnish of the Resolute Desk, awaiting yet more meetings scheduled for today, all according to plan. Next up, the Kirkpatrick Doctrine. Our foreign policy has been fundamentally misguided since a great mistake of South Africa. For too long, we have been misguided by naive idealism and a masochistic devotion to supporting governments that proclaim freedom and anti-fascism. This must be ended. The newly sworn in president is known for her pragmatic and realistic approach to foreign policy. Instead of bending to the naive desire to promote liberty and democracy on a world scale, we must recognize that we must foster democracy through the establishment of a strong and stable government that can be or can serve as a solid foundation for the future of a global alliance. These governments must not be weakened by our attempts to inorganically democratize them, but instead be hardened against outside influence from our geopolitical rivals and inter-revolutionary movements alike. Increase the CIA budget by 50 million, which is basically nothing, and get more decryption. Very cool. Uh, so, let's see. Debt. We have... There's no debt. I already got rid of debt. And we're doing pretty well. Doing pretty darn well. 677 factories. Uh, and we have the CIA modifier for the United States. And civilian stuff. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Cool. So you can invest more money in the CIA if you really wanted to. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. We were investing $2.3 million. Eh, whatever. Let's see. And we do have options around here, which we will need to do. We can target Republicans and Democrats. Yaki's NPP left. We can interfere with German operations here. So we can let's go and do that, because we can. Operations, operations commence. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. I've seen this so many times, it doesn't even matter. Best of luck to them. Very good. And as you can see... The Republican Democrat Party unity has collapsed, as well as a National Progressive Party, and American society is so horribly disunited, which will benefit presidential challengers and boost extremists. Yet somehow we got 78 Republican senators. I don't know what I... I don't understand how that actually worked, but it did. Somehow. Regardless, I think we're doing pretty darn well, and the Kirkpatrick Doctrine, we shall... Meet with the director. The CIA has maintained a mandate to operate without serious oversight by the president for almost three decades. They've been left to effectively run themselves, promoting a culture of stagnancy and inefficiency, wasting money on speculative science of dubious value and initiatives that lack a clear direction. This ends now. The intelligence community is a critical part of the president's new foreign policy initiative, for it is the most capable tool by which we can take advantage of the weaknesses of ideologically opposed governments. We've already tapped a, few new, a new candidate for director. Once they're approved by Congress, the meeting must be held immediately. Langley and the West Wing must operate in close coordination to properly accomplish our objectives. And ye shall know truth. The winds of change. Secretary of Defense John McCain Jr. looked puzzled by what associates Walt Rostow and Jean Kirkpatrick were discussing. Their meeting in the Oval Office had begun in earnest, but so far all they talked about was the Dominican Republic and how important it was to protect American interests overseas. So he began. You plan on completely overthrowing the government of the Dominican Republic without having a single American soldier involved? Kirkpatrick nodded, and McCain became even more puzzled. Then, why am I here? J Secretary McCain, the Western Hemisphere occasionally requires a deft touch and occasionally a less than deft touch. The plans set forth by the CIA are not in conflict with those of the Department of Defense. Rather, they require them. These regime changes need to happen, and the agency will get them done, but the U.S. military will ensure that these new regimes will remain loyal, like Guiana. Like Guyana, said Rostow, most of the regimes throughout Latin America are less than friendly to American interests and far too friendly to those of our enemies. The Dominican Republic is a domino that might fall over if given the just one small push. We need to make sure it falls on our side. That Once that's done, the muscle of the American military will be a good motivator for them to stay on our side. The pieces fall into place. And also, as you can tell, I got rid of most of my military. I love my flyboys, our airborne divisions so much. So those are the only divisions that we have, which helped out in lowering our debt. And apparently our other expenditures are minus 1.140045.44 1 KD. Whatever. Or USD. Whatever. It is what it is. 
Also, we've got to keep an eye on this, just because we do get an option in North America to, to or conduct <clears throat> operations, as we might say. But next up, open the floodgates? Why not? When it comes to dealing with the subversive elements within the U.S., we do not have the luxury of a light touch. Change cannot be dictated by small groups of sign-waving radicals who only care for their own pet causes. Ideas that fail to thrive in the marketplace of de democracy cannot be given special treatment, but these radicals fail to realize the harm they do to the nation. Operation Chaos will enable us to monitor and suppress these dangerous organizations. The majority will simply be monitored. Those found to be dangerous will be suppressed by our own front organizations, and the most dangerous ones will be targeted for dismantlement. If sufficient legal evidence to arrest prominent dissidents cannot be found, it will be creative. Democracy will represent the will of the people, not a radical fringe movement. And ye shall know the truth. The meeting with James Angleton, the new director of the CIA, had gone very well, of course. President Kirkpatrick didn't think it could have gone poorly at all, but it was better than expected. Together, they had laid out the plans for the expansion of the agency's budget, as well as the realignment of the agency towards anti-fascism. Regime changes in several disagreeable governments throughout Latin America were beginning to take shape. Well, Madam President, said Angleton, most of our plans for... Your Kirkpatrick Doctrine are being set in place. I take objection to that name. It's a product of many people's pragmatism. Pragmatism. Not exclusively my own. Regardless, I think it's best that we move on to domestic matters. The agency has identified many potential threats to the U.S. government, such as the Black Panthers that may be prudent to keep tabs on. Kirkpatrick leaned forward on the Resolute Desk. And what do you recommend we do about these... <clears throat> threats? Angleton pulled a manila folder out of his blazer and slid it across it to the president. She opened it, finding pages upon pages of names, Gus Hall, Angela Davis, Francis Yockey, and dozens of others. Next to each name was a word or phrase in blocked red ink. Monitor. Counteract. Submit for arrest or submit for termination. Kirkpatrick looked back at Angleton, astonished. What's this? Chaos. Very cool. Let's see. What do we want to do here? Do we want to target Democrats? Sure, because... We want to have 100% Republican support in the Senate. Because 78 Republicans, that's not enough, obviously, right? That's not enough. We have one Yaki-Eye and one far-right NPP. Man. Kind of wild, I'll say. Just, just, just kind of wild. I can't believe I collapsed both party unity. Jesus. Oh, also, out of the world, uh, Germany. Bormann is leading. He looks like a really old guy who's... Just extremely bald, but whatever. We shall open the floodgates. Next up, after that, we should make the shipments. President Kirkpatrick is not a woman to be trifled with, nor will she allow under her guidance and command for the U.S. to be bullied around the rest of, by the rest of the world. Out in the tropics of the Caribbean, pirates reigned and scourged the seas of the colonists, forging their way there. Now, however, authoritarians and fascists more than make up for their long-dead scourges. As the heartless dictators opened the way for the Germans and the Japanese to sink their teeth into America's underbelly, and like the strong will of British law centuries ago, we shall see them hang. Most notably, the hangman reaches for the regime of Joaquin Balaguer, who has managed to imprison his republic in a gridlock of authoritarianism and oppression. While the opposition striving for democracy crawls in the shadows, however, we shall ship over our best arms and ammunition to ensure a fiery end to the unjust regime, regime or reign of Balaguer of the Dominicans. And Dominican Republic, hello there. Joaquin. Oh, we also have the oil... Do we still have the oil crisis? We probably still have that, right? And we also have Italy in the OFN. So, go figure. Conservative finance. Uh, the, yeah, the AFL-CIO was victorious, which really hurt Barry Goldwater. So, yeah. We have these guys in here. And France is in the, the pact. Oh, well, the Einheits pact, which also includes Iran. But it's cool that we got Italy, too. Uh, Africa Shield still exists, I guess, with Falschner. All right, then. And also, as you can see, the big red blob up here. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics actually unified. Under Zukov, in which we actually proclaimed him to be the true successor to everything else in Russia, so that's why we kind of like each other. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. See, Empire of Japan wise, who is leading Empire of Japan? It's being led by Takagi. Hello, Takagi. And they're out of focus, I guess. What is that? Anti mainstream conservative. Okay. Make the shipments. And next up, we shall begin this destabilization. Revolutions can have an endless supply of guns, bolts, and bombs blasted away through the opposition government. However, if they don't have the popular support and the manpower to use all that equipment, then not a gosh darn thing is going to end up happening. Let us now our duty to begin re reinforcing the foundations of revolution and a revolt against a fascist sympathetic 
uh, governments across the ways. For now, hundreds of thousands have rallied in the name of standing against the dictatorship of Balaguer and his collaboration with fascist powers. From the streets of Santiago de los Caberos, to the cabinets in the capital of Santo Domingo de Guzman. People are tired of giving in to the wanton wants and desires of the fascists, and President Kirkpatrick is more than happy to oblige their defiance. Very good. All right, so down here, America, what can we do with... Ooh, I can't select anything. There we go. We can do the USA, CIA, MH, chaos. Well, an operation to increase stability and protect against extremism will be launched. We're going to make sure we have 100% ability. Very nice. Best of luck to them. Oh, we also have research about that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's do some more anti air because it doesn't matter at all. Thank you very much. Money wise, only $885 billion in GDP and no debt. Awesome. Very awesome. So, Africa did collapse as we saw earlier. The Kingdom of Morocco, Iberia, or the Iberian Union did collapse. So, there you go. Actually, Gibraltar. Who is this? Gibraltar Dam Zone. Well, they're, they're they're independent. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, if you would like to read about the death of Supreme Court Justice, go right ahead. Ooh, who was a conservative? Let's fill this vacancy right now regarding that stuff. Let's see, the Supreme Court has seven conservatives and two liberals. I thought someone just died. Well, maybe not. But let's find a front man. Washington, Bolivar, Lenin, Castro, all of these men stand greatly different from one another, and we may not like some of them, but they all have one commonality with another. Being the shining star behind a long-built, hard-fought revolution that forged a new path in history. And in a new life for all of their constituents. The brewing conflict in the Dominican Republic needs such a revolutionary actor. Someone courageous, someone charismatic, someone willing to do all that it takes to earn the people's freedom and America, its ally to the Southwest. To shield the continuous strikes of the fascist acts against the doors of the New World. Sure, some may call the practice of searching for such a face to the revolution outdated, or accuse it, accuse it of limiting the breadth by which the revolution can expand for the country. However, America's best interests lie in the safeguarding of the revolution, and a shining star can help kickstart the progress as quickly and securely as possible. A Castillo of Aron. Very cool. Operational success, very good. Got more exp exp expertise, stability, and ideology drift defense. Very good. And we're done with our air doctrine. Heavy aircraft, let's grab some improved aero refilling, because why not? Uh, anything there? I could increase unity, but now nah, we're good. Our target Republicans, well, they already have so much support, we might as well keep that for now. Anything for Central America? And how about South America? No. You have options for all over the place, including war shipments to the USSR, because why not? But we'll find a front man. CIA Director James Ingleton stepped into the Secretary of State Walt Rostow's office with some purpose. He tossed a manila folder onto Rostow's desk. So, he began. The President wants the Dominican President ousted by this man. Vincho Castillo, replied Rostow, puffing up a cigarette. Dominican lawyer, political figure, and leader of the opposition. That's a good thing, too. Castillo jo Joaquin Balguer is a bit of a fascist strongman, and Castillo isn't? Castillo, Castillo. Russell smiled. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but he's better than the alternative in any case. How have your preparations for his coup gone? Well, after making a few calls, a few bribes, and a few friends, I'd say our friends in Hispaniola have his chessboard set. He's got a few thousand CIA armed militiamen at his back. And the Dominican army? We're looking into that. Word in Langley is a commander of the Santo Domingo's garrison might take a donation over a paycheck. Well then, what are we waiting for? All that remains is the order. Rally the party first, though. The far right of the NPP has taken a massive shift in initiative over the past decade, and if we fail to reinvigorate the party to stand with President Kirkpatrick in a quest to protect the American shield of democracy, then everything we've built up to this point shall crumble and fall as well. Segregationists of old, reformists of new, and the American conservatives must now band together behind the star-spangled banner, for it is the far right of the NPP that holds the light of patriotism against the darkness of fascists and imperialists abroad. Besides, organizing the party will allow us to re rein in all the weak-willed, rubber-spined bureaucrats in the party who keep getting shoved around by the likes of the Republican Democrats, while taking hold of our more liberal-minded brethren across the wings of the MPP as well. And we grow a little bit more unified, but probably not enough to actually do anything about that. Cool. Nothing really there. We can do that stuff, but eh. Interfere with German stuff, that's fine. Might as well. This money's not going to go anywhere anyways, so. Very good. Because we have more than enough money. Liquid reserves, five and a half billion? Not bad. Also, I should show you the social development of our world. Or the country. So... Academic base is getting better. Uh, research facilities are pretty good. Mass mechanization is actually going down, which kind of sucks. We're doing better on poverty, which is not too bad. Uh, doesn't matter, nothing there. Industrial expertise is going down, but our army professionalism is going up more. Uh, let's see, we already have a bunch of conservatives, so we'll go with conservatives again, because why not? This, this episode is very weird. 
grab some advanced anti-sub helis because we can. And then we restore the war powers. Some people in the country who lack the guts to stand up for it have criticized actions of presidents past and utilizing our brave troops on air, land, and sea to protect our interests around the world. Those people are the same ones we have to thank for allowing Mr. Adolf Hitler's blue boot print to be stamped across all of Europe and allowed Hideo Tojo to cleave the American spirit and twain across the Pacific. Now we have to focus on a greater future, one where we won't even give the enemy the chance to subvert our power across the world. A future eliminated by the beacon of democracy. However, to do this, we have to take some grand steps in terms of legislation and knock a few paid or a few pegs down from the checks and balances that are preventing the Kirkpatrick administration from fully protecting the interests of America. In particular, the War Powers Resolution has put a stranglehold against the President's ability to act quickly and effectively, requiring a full 48 hours of alert to Congress in advance, with a full ability to get shot down by those bureaucratic dudes and a strict time limit on the strength of our or length of our intervention thus we need to tear this act out of the legal system so we may act as a sword and shield of the american spirit across the world operation kr warlock to bring order to the dominican republic will be unlocked oh boy oh and here we go so we need to pass some legislation our party's yaki senators oppose the bill far right oppose the bill maybe we can pass it maybe we can't but we'll see what happens anyways Operations stay in the course. Despite many calls from moderate factions to restore a more balanced state of affairs to the Supreme Court, we've chosen to keep the current arrangements as they are. While we might not have pushed to stack the court any further our way than it already was, the court will remain in its present state, which some might call unbalanced for the foreseeable future. While party officials have emphasized the need for continuing reform as a reason for maintaining the current course, the media has predictably lambasted our lack of impartiality. As public discontent grows, there is great concern amongst our analysis that even our primary voters may gradually become disillusioned should we continue our forceful nature. Our way or the highway? Whatever. Operational success? Great. So we have 16 and 7. Not very good. We need more Republicans. And we need more Democrats. We'll see what happens in 10 days. Doesn't really matter though. We'll do whatever we can to ensure American spirits remain high across our part of the world. Reports for duty. Cool. Let's get another recruit. Very nice. Minus 66.69. Nice. Restore the war powers. And then we, we will make the call soon. CIA coup? Well, we can do it. We can go right ahead. Let's see. Do we have anything up here yet? No. Uh, let's see. Let's double check this first. Oh. You can spend the money, that's fine, doesn't matter. And political landscape. I do want to see what happens. Oh, wait. Oh, it just auto-completed. Alright, so let's go and do the coup. And we want to make sure we actually do this successfully. Operation commence. Best of luck to them. We have six active agents. Yeah, we can't do a lot of stuff at the same time. Current expertise is not bad. Used to train agents and research advanced technologies. That still provides bonuses to missions. Expertise is granted or gained by successfully by completing missions and loss after failures. Analysis capability, the higher the better. Con counteract regional obfuscation. Obfuscation. Cool. And can we have a successful coup? Now, do we still have seven and two? Uh, seven, yep. Operation success. Good job, everyone. Victory. Our mission was successfully accomplished on all men are returning home and safe and sound. This is a rousing victory for the CIA, along with America and the free world. With their tracks covered and the world a bit safer, we can rest easy preparing for our next incursion against the fascist menace. Well done, gentlemen. Then the long dock of Langley. President Jean Kirkpatrick, Secretary of War Walt Rostov, Secretary of State John McCain Jr., and CIA Director James Angleton sat around a map of the Dominican Republic, the stench of tobacco smoke filling the dank meeting room. Angleton pointed at various blue markers that dotted the map of the island nation, several police departments, and Santo Domingo and Santiago de los Caberos. Uh, Caballeros have had quietly expressed support for the Castillo's movement. With his, when his forces, now numbering around 8,000 men, move out of the jungles, they'll seize the largest cities without too much internal resistance. The general currently guarding Santo Domingo has said he won't have his men interfere either. How much did that cost us, asked the president. Not too much, said McCain. I figured most of the Dominican military can see the writing on the wall. Away from the cameras of the press corps. Jean Kirkpatrick took a long drag on a cigarette. American interests come first, she said coldly. We do things to protect those whom we love, that which we hold dear, America. She tapped out the ash and laid the smoke onto a tray. She looked at Angleton. Make the call. And we made the call. Actually, if you want to read about making the call, and there you go. 
The gunpowder has been laid, the machine guns have been entrenched, the operatives have trained their militias, and the people's voices are in the air. All that will take for Balaguer's fascist minded government to crash and burn now is a spark, and America, oh beautiful, for spacious skies is a matchbox filled to the brim. It may stand true that the revolutionaries of the Dominican Republic may walk from all different paths of life, businessmen, market salesmen, soldiers, politicians, and more. However, some more of them may have the chance of bickering squabble, none of them that matters though, now is that the revolution is prepared. The guns are loaded, the people are rallied, and the leadership has a new face. It is our duty, now more than ever, to secure America's safety by bringing down the network of fascist influences in the Caribbean. And by the guerre's spider web will be the first to burn against the flame of the beacon of liberty. And I believe that is pretty much all that we can do. Because now, that is all ten focuses completed. And there's not much we can do in America. There's not much we can do in Central America. And let's a good look. The Dominican Republic. Uh, I don't think that's your actual person there, but hey. Whatever. I hope you enjoyed a little sneak peek, about a hundred days of content or so, regarding Jean Kirkpatrick. Obviously, when TNO2 comes out, I'll probably come back to Kirkpatrick if she has, like, full content. But regardless, let me know in the comments below. Because there's other presidents that we can get. Gus Hall, obviously Francis Yaki. There's a few others that I can't remember off the top of my head. But let me know who I should go for next in the 1972 elections. Regardless, if you enjoyed this little uh, you know, video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tom tomorrow or in another episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.